I have written down already some of the calculations that we already did. I've got V A and A prime all there across the top, um, V cross A and magnitude of V cross A. Okay, one of the other things that we're going to need, uh, we'll need to be able to do V cross A dot A prime, put some parentheses there, dot A prime. Um, again, make sure that you choose the right vectors here. So this is the V cross A vector. And then I'm going to dot that with the A prime and make sure you're choosing the A prime vector, not something else. Okay, so when I do that dot product, um, when I take the I components times each other, notice that the I component in this first vector really has two terms. And so when I take that I component from the second vector and multiply it, I'm going to go ahead and distribute through the sine function. Um, so that we'll be able to do some simplifications easier. So I'll have 2 sine t cosine t and then plus 2t sine squared t. That's just from multiplying the two i component functions times each other. And then for the j component functions, I will have plus negative 2 sine t cosine t and then plus 2t cosine squared t. So that's from multiplying the two j component functions together. And then in the k component function, I'll have 1 times 0, so we'll get 0. Be careful about that, too. That's another place where I see a lot of students make mistakes. Okay, and um, I've got some simplification again here, a couple of terms that cancel, and then a couple of terms that involve Pythagorean identity that we can simplify. So this whole expression here, big long expression, simplifies all the way down to be just 2t. Okay, one more thing we'll need before we go ahead and plug into the formulas for curvature and torsion, and that's magnitude of V. So we'll have negative sine t, the quantity squared, plus cosine, cosine t squared, plus 2t, the quantity squared, all inside the radical here. Um, so uh, in the first two terms, we'll end up with sine squared plus cosine squared of t, and I'm just going to go ahead and write that down as 1. And then the last term is 4t squared. So there's our magnitude of v. All right, so we're ready to write down our curvature and torsion answers. So the formula we chose to use for curvature was magnitude of v cross a divided by the magnitude of v cubed. Okay, so magnitude of v cross a, we had calculated on the previous screen. It's written up there in black at the top of this screen. Square root of 4t squared plus 5. And then the denominator, magnitude of v cubed. So uh, that'll be the square root of 1 plus 4t squared cubed. I'm just going to write it as 1 plus 4t squared to the 3 halves. My 3 halves looks a little funny there. Let me see if I can, oops. Okay, so there's our curvature. I'm going to put a box around that so that we can focus on that in a little bit. And then torsion, we had v cross a dot a prime for the numerator and magnitude of v cross a squared on the denominator. Okay, so on the numerator here, uh, we'll have 2t. And then on the denominator, our magnitude of v cross a and black up there above, uh, square root of 4t squared plus 5, but we're going to square it. So we'll just have 4t squared plus 5 here on the denominator. Okay, so a couple of things that we might want to do with these curvature and torsion answers. Uh, we might want to evaluate them at particular values of t if I wanted to calculate curvature and torsion at any particular points. Um, but probably a little bit more sophisticated way to think about them would be to kind of think about their overall behavior when they're largest, when they're smallest, um, what happens when t is large, what happens when t is positive, what happens when t is negative, what happens when t is zero. Um, so let's just talk about some of those things.
Um, one of the interesting things to think about here would be sort of the long-term behavior of the curve or what happens when t gets very large, uh, either in the positive or negative direction. Let's talk about the positive direction first. Um, so if you are pretty good with limits um, that you did in calculus 1 uh, and 2, I guess, when you did L'Hopital's rule, uh, you'll be able to see that the curvature approaches 0 when t approaches infinity and the torsion also approaches 0 when t approaches infinity. Okay, so what that means is that as we go farther and farther out on the curve, the curve becomes more and more like a straight line with zero bend and zero twist to the motion, or nearly zero bend and nearly zero twist anyway. Those values are approaching zero. Um, some other things to note, um, that the curvature function is never actually equal to zero. There is no value of t that would make the curvature ever actually equal to zero, so there is always at least a little bit of bend to the curve. Uh, the torsion function is equal to zero when t equals zero. Um, some other things to notice, of course, curvature is never negative anyway, so our curvature function here uh, would never be negative either. Um, by definition, curvature is neg never negative. Our torsion function, though, is sometimes positive and sometimes negative. Uh, the torsion function will be negative when t is negative, and it would be positive when t is positive. So what that means is that we've got a different kind of twist to the curve when t is negative than when t is positive, basically a different direction of twist, either a kind of right-handed twist or a left-handed twist of the curve as we move along the curve. Um, some other things that we might be interested in is uh, we might be interested in maximizing or minimizing curvature and torsion. Um, so we could look at when uh, curvature is largest or smallest and when torsion is largest or smallest. And if you can't uh, figure this out by just kind of looking at the function and thinking about it, like we sort of did with these other things we analyzed here, um, you guys know how to maximize and minimize a function. In Calculus 1, you learned how to maximize and minimize a function. So you've got curvature now as its own function and its own right, and torsion as a function as well, and um, you know how to maximize and minimize functions. So you can put that together and maximize or minimize each of those. Okay.